the amazing thing I think about Windows Server 2012 is there's something for everybody. You know, I think we're focusing a lot on virtualization and some of the advancements we've made there in terms of massive increases in, in uh, amount of memory we can support, number of virtual machines we can support, 320 uh, logical processes per virtual machine, so really significant gains across the board in terms of uh, virtualizing the data center. Uh, but whether you're a small business, a uh, medium business, enterprise, whether you're a service provider, there's a whole raft of new features across the board, not just in virtualization, but in things like storage, uh, how we're enabling and lighting up Windows 8 for remote working scenarios, allowing customers to deal with big data. There's really something for everyone, and that's as a result of this long uh, sort of four or five year development cycle where we really took a step back, listened a lot to what the market wanted, spent a lot of time talking to customers about the kinds of things that they needed in a server OS going forward. Uh, really spent a long time making sure that the quality and the features were there. So um, one of the things we've talked about is we've set a bunch of uh, you know, thresholds for the product about the kinds of things that we wanted to build for. And then you know, how do we go above that? How do we beat those, those internal benchmarks about how we're going to build the product? So we're feeling good about the, the quality of the product and also the, the kind of breadth of new features, but also the performance improvements that people are going to get. And this is a pretty fundamental release of the server product, uh, the kind of thing we think is going to be in the data center for a long time to come. Yeah, it's, uh, obviously we're just getting started uh, in the last couple of weeks in terms of the general availability of the product. We know that the downloads um, of every phase of the, uh, the release preview and, uh, and the beta products have far exceeded anything else we've done for server uh, previously. So we know that the, the IT pros are really keen to get their hands on the product and, and start to deploy it and think about it. Um, the, the stat locally, I mean, it's, it's, it's about three in four uh, physical x86 servers in the Australian market that now run Windows Server in some guise. Uh, and that translates to about a new, one new Windows Server coming online, one new physical machine coming online once every five minutes, you know, morning, noon and night, 365 days a year. So uh, not a trivial process we recognize for people to migrate. Uh, but we're seeing a lot, of, uh, a lot of the analysts and a lot of the IT pros across the board sort of really talking about the fact that it's time to take stock uh, of where you are in, in all the different deployment phases and look at, at Server 2012 as the new platform to go forward. So we think the adoption is going to be huge. The excitement here at TechEd is, uh, is kind of in the air. You can feel it uh, with, with everybody walking around and listening to the keynotes. So uh, excitement is high and we expect that to translate a lot into how people use the product. One of the new features, I guess, or one of the new thought processes for Windows Server as we bring this release to market is kind of thinking about how do you manage infrastructure. So it's fair to say that you know in the data center today, most people have moved on from thinking about deploying and managing single servers. You know, we've moved to an era of virtualization, but even at the virtualization layer, um, you know, not just thinking about VMs, but how do I manage my data center as a whole? So it's kind of a couple of key key things that we've done. The first is Server Manager now. Uh, represents the entire kind of cluster or the entire data center in terms of the physical infrastructure. So through Server Manager, you can then manage the whole fabric of the data center uh, as one kind of one whole. Um, you can also use Server Manager to manage instances of, of Windows or other operating systems running up in Windows Azure. So bringing the public cloud into Server Manager and giving you again a sort of single a single view. Um, probably more excitingly is what we did with, um, with System Center 2012 and, and with the next release, the Service Pack 1 release of System Center 2012, where we're really kind of stepping back and saying we think people want to be able to manage um, the public cloud instances that they run in, in, in platforms like Azure, uh, things that they're doing with service provider partners and things that they're doing in their own data center and bring that and abstract that into a series of clouds that they can manage with System Center. So, um, you know, I think uh, for people watching the video, if you haven't checked out what you can do in System Center 2012 now, particularly with Windows Server and Windows Azure, just amazing leap forward in terms of how you think about managing infrastructure. Uh, simplifies that, you know, gives you a single view, and also, particularly with System Center, allows you to really drill down into not just the physical and the virtual infrastructure of, of your, your environment, but think about the actual applications. So, you know, how is the service performing? What are the different tiers of the service? How are they performing in, in different um, scenarios of deployment in the different kind of cloud models? So, across the board, pretty, pretty cool advancements in how we think about managing server infrastructure. Yeah, there the certainly are. One of the big things we focused on in terms of uh, supporting, particularly Windows 8, I mean, you know, we hear a lot about the consumerization of IT. We think about that through the lens of, of sort of being people centric rather than um, purely just the device. Uh, but it's fair to say people want a consistent experience, irrespective of the device, the location where they're working. So, 
you know, to go with what's a pretty major release on the client side with Windows 8 and the different form factors there, we focused a lot on the server side about how we deliver those kind of services. So um, a lot of focus on things like technologies like VDI um, through what we now call remote FX. Uh, that really improves the user experience of remote apps being delivered, video services being delivered over VDI, making it a first class experience to be remote from the office uh, but still connecting back to the same kind of services. So some, some real advancements there. Um, but a lot of the things are also quite subtle. So if you think about how people uh, think about identity and security in the enterprise today, which is a big, a big focus area for companies dealing with lots of different devices coming in. Um, we showed today in the, in the TechEd uh, plenary in, in the major IT Pro keynote that there's a lot of advancements now in thinking about how do you apply security to files that are being delivered through technologies like remote FX. So making sure that you understand um, the kind of data that's being delivered, what the security policy is, how that applies to the user. So there's a lot of glue between uh, Windows Server 2012 and Windows 8. For, you know, for a long time now, there's been a lot of focus on Hyper-V from a performance perspective in terms of how well we, we perform within sort of industry benchmarks. There are kind of lots of improvements that we've made in that, in that performance level. The first is um, the number of nodes that we support, and a significant increase there, up to 64 nodes uh, per cluster and 4,000 VMs. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's way ahead of what most people are now doing in the industry. So we've seen pretty significant improvements there in terms of the, scale of the underlying scalability of Hyper-V. Yeah, one, one of the other key areas that we've really thought a lot about is storage. And if you think about, you know, storage in the data centers is one of the predominant areas that people are spending a lot of money on. So it's a very high, high cost for a lot of organizations. Uh, so we've really thought through um, storage, you know, through a new lens of what we call storage spaces and really thinking about how do you um, abstract storage away and also abstract networking away and not just compute. Um, and provide pools of storage that can be used you know, much more generically across the, the VMs running in the data center. So we've got a lot of improvements you know, in terms of scalability of storage, but also the, how we can do that cost effectively, not just relying on large scale SAN technologies, but local attached storage to, to achieve the same sort of scale. And that has implications in terms of things like VM mobility. So um, using just an Ethernet wire, the ability to move a virtual machine out of your data center to another of your data centers or to your service provider, uh, irrespective of the underlying network architecture. So a lot of those features rely on the ability to abstract not just compute and processing power, but also storage and networking. So we thought a lot about how to virtualize across the whole fabric of the data center, and we think that's going to be an exciting thing for people to deploy.